Doctor, doctor, give me the news. I've got a bad case of loving you. No, we, we're not going to talk about love. We're going to talk about doctors. Getting a checkup for mm -hmm. crying out loud. Can That'll I make, make you happy? happy. <gasps> nice. Hey, you guys, how's it going? It's Scott. And <coughs> Wait a minute. <coughs> this is Jeff. We're here to talk about being happy uh, and how difficult it is to be happy when you're dead. Yeah. And, and not that you're not going to be happy when you're dead someday. That's a possibility. We've talked about that before. Yeah, 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 yeah. But our focus is on being happy while we're living. Yes. So one of the keys to happiness is coughing Coughing it up, up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it'd be productive with that cough. That's a very dry raspy cough. I want to see actual phlegm being produced. That's not the point of this video. The point of the video is to remind you that if you want to be happy, how can you be happier, right? Take care of yourself. Yeah. Uh, we're shooting today's episode here in front of Alta View Hospital in uh, the Salt Lake City Valley of the state of Utah. Mm -hmm. uh, just as a reminder that you really ought to have, now there's a debate, and I don't know if it's an <laughs> ongoing debate, or even if it's a very generally popular debate. Uh, it it kind of goes like this. Look, am I going to go to the doctor every single year even though I'm okay? Right. Like, I, I'm not coughing. I don't have a pain in my sternum or whatever. Everything is ticking along just wonderfully. This is your sternum here. I know. And what, I've you got point one down here too. Okay. <laughs> that's my stonum. That's what that is. But, you know, that's the big debate. Do I go ahead and go in? Do I have to waste that free visit I get every year? because it's gonna require me to take a half a day off of work and I gotta get my, my vein picked on and blood and taken. And nothing's changed do from year yeah, to year. I'm know. basically the same person. You, if I missed my yearly checkup, I'd be in a world of hurt. Why? That's because funny, I by suffer, the way. Yeah, hmm, I suffer from high cholesterol. Uh, I think my record is 327. Wow. And that's something that you don't feel and see, until he's, it's too late. He's thin and in pretty good shape. Yeah. That's a genetic thing to have that level of high cholesterol. But the idea here is that should you go annually or should you not, we don't care. It's up to you. Just go. Some people will say, well, I don't go for preventive reasons. I go for curative reasons. So in other words, you know, I really don't see the doctor until I need to see the doctor. Because if I go annually and do a physical and an annual checkup, maybe psychosomatically I'll be influenced that I really do have something wrong with me or something like that. Look, that's not our debate. This one goes every year. He's got it locked in on his phone. Do you know when your next appointment is? Uh, it's always on my birthday. How January 17th. 17th. Yeah, it's easy to remember. He'll be birthday, in there. Birthday, doctor. See, I don't do birthday, that. Birthday, turn your head and cough. I'm completely different. But one thing we do have in common is we both want to stay alive. So if I feel something coming on, if I think something's broken or hurt, even with the ridiculous state of healthcare and how much it costs me just to pay for the insurance premiums that don't even pay for the services that I'm paying the premiums for, and if I use them like a car, it seems like my prices go up, and every year I have to join a new insurance plan in order to whatever. The point is, is that if you want to be happy, you've got to stay alive. Now, you could go to a traditional doctor, right? That's what most people do. My wife is big on homeopathic doctors. Oh, right? boy. If you're not into the, you know, uh, the traditional way of doing things, hey, there's a lot of board-certified MDs who are also homeopathic. And what does right that now? mean? What is homeopathic? homeopathic That's like a natural that, way. They don't use... Yeah. Like prescription meds or things like that. Yeah, well, there's there's traditional they ways. They give of birth doing at it. home, For sort example, of things. For example, like lowering my cholesterol. What they're going to do is they're going to suggest other things besides the drugs, right? Because, yeah, yeah. You know their contention is, and I happen to agree with a lot of what they say about you know side effects down the long term. Your liver is going to be shot if you stay on this drug for a certain amount of time. So there are natural ways, including your you know your diet, habits, yeah, yeah, to lower your cholesterol. So that's in a, in a little bit of a nutshell what homeopathic people really focus on. Right, right. I understand. So here's the deal. You want to be happy? Take care of yourself. You want to be happy and live a long life? You want to stay up right? You know, go see a doctor now and then. Get I mean, have them up. check your pulse and your, your, your heartbeat, which is really the same thing. Have yeah. them check your cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Have them take a look at, uh, have them tap on your lungs. Yeah, have them kneecaps. do the old Dr. Jellyfinger. Now, I had to do that myself recently. And you did one on yourself? No, I had to have one myself oh, recently. Okay, I finally, you know, the doctor said, come back when you're 40 and we'll do it. And then I came back when I was 40 and he looked at me and he, and he, and he just kind of said, eh, you don't really want me to do this to you. I guess not. Okay. Come back when you're 50. So I came back when I was 50, and 10 years later, he still didn't want to do it. 
but I said, I think we really better. Dr. So he did. Well, he did. I'm just kind of yeah, messing yeah, with him. Yeah, yeah. And then we did a full colonoscopy. Oh, and, uh, that's I got a to totally admit, other episode well, right then and there. That's, we even have video. That's true. I do have video yeah. of me coming out of the anesthesia and talking about. Speaking of doctors, who would, who would be your favorite or your top three Kay. TV or top three movie doctors that you'd be comfortable, you know. So here's our lists. These are our lists that we share with each other that we don't ever know what no. the other person has done. No. And sometimes, interestingly, they they uh, they coincide. Yeah. You know, they agree. Yeah. I don't think mine are going to coincide. Right? I, th I, number think, three, I think one of, do your number three. My number three is Doc Holliday. Oh, yeah. no, you're right. Yeah. That's you know, you, you didn't know. I know that you've seen the movies, right? <laughs> Whether it's the Kevin Costner one or whether it's the other one, you know, the one that everybody likes, Tombstone, Doc Holliday was a doctor. Yeah, he was. So, so uh, when he asked you to drop your pants, you yeah. you drop your pants. He pulls out his six shooter yeah. and he says, drop them. I'm uh, at point of, at gun number point. three for me. I'm going to go number three, and I thought you might have this on your list because I know how much you love Jane Seymour. Yeah, she's number two. I Dr. Quinn, medicine yeah, woman. She's number two. I could show you right Why now. Why wouldn't I want to have Dr. Quinn working me over? Yeah. Okay, and that's your number that two? That was my number two, so I'll go right to my number one. Well, let me give my number okay, two. Yeah. My okay, number two, right. Ellen Pompeo from uh, Grey's Anatomy. Oh, yeah, I, I, I never, I never really from. watched Grey's Anatomy. There's a lot of nice doctors on that yeah. show, but yeah. she's she's attractive. That'll work. I'm just That'll saying. Hi, honey. Yeah. yeah. So number, number one. one for me is the doctor from Fletch, Chevy Chase. Uh, M. Emmett Walsh. M. Emmett Walsh. It's a happy, rotund guy, you know, so easy, laughing a lot, you know. <laughs> Bend over, Mr. Babar. You know, it's kind of fun. So. <laughs> Got the whole fist up there. Moon River. There are. That's a good one. My number one, also from, not from Grey's Anatomy, from uh, House. Olivia Wilde, who uh, went on, of course, to great movies and things, but yeah. Olivia Wilde is perhaps the most stunningly gorgeous, strikingly handsome fake doctor woman, fake doctor. Yeah, I have yet to lay eyes on, and I wouldn't mind if she. So okay, see a so doctor, you know. and you'll be happy, happier for it, especially if uh, you know if you don't tell your significant other. Get a checkup. Hey, thanks for joining us on another little video adventure. We appreciate the time that you spend with us, and uh, we hope you appreciate the time that you spend with us. And we would appreciate the like and subscribe menu buttons being hit. Why don't you go ahead and do that now, and your life will not be in danger. <laughs>